Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to say thank you for joining another broadcast or podcast of Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Pastor Nate Brozier, and it's always exciting to see that you would come once again just to listen and indulge into what I have to speak today. And so today, I promise, I'm not going to be very long today. Again, like I told you last pod, last broadcast, I'm going to try to break this down in, in, in season four as we go into 2024. I'm going to try to really take my you know, really be intentional about 15, 20 minutes on these kind of sessions. And so I will be airing some preaching messages more and more here and there uh, because we're going to be launching Bridgeway uh, Christian Center here in the next month. And so it's exciting times. And so I'll be able to relay some of that stuff on here. So a more frequent uh, podcast, but I'll still be doing these kind. These little sessions, something just sharing with you on my heart. I may be actually adding uh, some things uh, uh, through Facebook, uh, through Instagram stories, or something to those lines uh, that may be just more of a devotional type of setting, five or ten minutes. Uh, but that's kind of the freshness. That's what's going. That's what's going to be happening here soon, uh, going into season four. Uh, but let's get started. I want to talk to you simply on the lines of blessed in the storm. I don't even know if that's what I'm going to name it, but I believe it's something on that line. Being blessed even in the midst of a storm. And I'm going to read this particular passage to you because something jumped. I was, as I was reading and studying today at the office, uh, this particular passage, it came on something inspired by me and Bishop O'Neill was talking. And, and this particular passage jumped out to me today as we were talking and, and indulge me just for a little bit. I want to read the first 16 verses of Jonah chapter one. Come on, indulge me, because I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, but I want this to get into your spirit. And uh, and it reads this way, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up, he told him, and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. But here's what Jonah did in verse 3. But Jonah got up. He did exactly what Jesus said. He got up. But here's what he did. He rebelled. He went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where, the, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord, verse 4, hurled a powerful wind over the sea causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for the lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw their cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep, he asks him, at this time like this? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded, who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah then answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. Then the sailors were terrified when they heard this for he had already told them, listen to this, Jonah had already told the sailors prior to getting on the boat who he was. And so that, that, that just kind of stuck out to me for a bit. It said that he already had told them he was running away from the Lord. Then they groaned, oh, why did you do it? And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop this storm? Then Jonah said, throw me into the sea and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, here's what the sailors did, rode even harder to get the ship to the land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Listen, look how things shifted. They were crying out to their God. 
Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O Lord, they said, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin and don't hold us responsible for his death. O Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors, listen, listen to this. Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea. And look what happens. The storm stopped at once. Now here's what I'm going to speak on. Verse 16. Then the sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power. And they offered his God, him, God, Yahweh, a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. <laughs> now listen, you're ready for me to talk about God had prepared a, sh a fish, which he did. God prepared a fish for Jonah. Prepared it from probably the time that, you gotta listen. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go so, so far down this line. You gotta understand that God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah chose to go to Tarshish. He deliberately went in the opposite direction like many of us do. And here's the thing, God prepared a fish, a fish that would not have acid in its stomach to kill him in the first day and a half or day. Because you gotta think about this, you can't live in a fish's stomach for probably three days total because the acids in the stomach would eat us alive. But God, the Bible says, had prepared a fish for him. But that's not where I'm going. That's some revelation for somebody. Listen, God will, even in the midst of disobedience, God will protect you. Because if he's a God of second chances, my God, he's a God of third, four, five, 1,000 chances. He, he never gives up on us, even though we give up on him. Even in the midst of a storm, God will bless you. How would he bless Jonah? He was thrown into a raging sea, but in the midst of that raging sea, the Bible says it calmed. And then there was a fish that was prepared to get him to send him into a season of restoration. Even in the midst of disobedience, God finds a way of getting us taken care of, restoring us, protecting us, guarding us, so to speak. But that's not where I'm talking about. We're still blessed in the storm. How would we ever look? I've never heard, honestly, I'm 47 years old as of today. A couple more months, I can't say that. 47 years, I've been in church my entire life and I never heard anybody ever preach on verse 16 that maybe there was a reason God had called Jonah to go to Nineveh because God knew, and if we look throughout the chap, read the book for yourself. As we look throughout that particular passage or that whole book, we see that Jonah goes on later and says, I knew that you would forgive them. You're, you're, you, you, would, you, would, you would save them and forgive them and you wouldn't destroy them. I knew that that's what you were. You were a God. And so, but God still wanted to use him for that time. But look, God used his disobedience and he went, and the Bible says, in the opposite direction. And it tells, and then he goes on to tell the sailors that who he was, he was running from his God. Number one, he's letting them know that he is, his God is Yahweh. He let that know real easy, because he says it twice in there, as I've already told you who I'm running from, my God. And then he says, my God is the God of the sea and all the land and all the earth. He began to acknowledge his God to the sailors. And it was in the midst of a storm that these men who were unbelievers, who were lost, who were doing their own thing, going where they wanted to go because they were the ones going to Tarshish. He just caught on and went where they were going. And so what happened in the midst of his, of his decision of going the opposite direction, God still used Jonah even in the opposite direction. Now, you know, 
that doesn't always preach well because we always want to say, if he would have obeyed God the first time, he wouldn't have had to sit in the belly of a fish for three days. Yeah, that preaches. So obey God's voice when it tells you to obey him the first time. That preaches. It is preaches well. Listen, disobedience can cause a fish or you to be thrown into a sea by your disobedience can cause you to be resting in the fish or the belly of a fish for three days. It'll, I've heard it preached this way, it'll put you in places that you were never meant to be. But oh, contrary, the Bible says that God had prepared a fish for Jonah. God knew because he's all knowing. God knows the decisions that we're going to make before we make them. He, number one, gives us free will to do whatever we want. We can choose to follow him or we can choose to walk away from him. But here's where I want to get this in your spirit. You may be at a crossroad in your life and you may have felt like you've went the wrong way, but God can still use you when you've went the opposite direction. How can, what, Pastor, you, you're, you're scaring me right now. You're messing with me because I, I, I'm not sure I'm following with you. Listen, when God calls you, number one, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Your calling is without repentance. It's, you can't walk away from it. So when God called Jonah, his word will not return void. And so we have to trust that he knows what's going to happen before we know it's going to happen. I know it's just, you got to trust God by faith. As Bishop says, the only thing we're going to get from God is by faith. We've got to trust God by if everything we have. And so listen, even if you're in the midst of the opposite direction, maybe you went and you did something that you thought at the time was the right decision. It may have been a wrong decision, but God can still use you right there where you're at. What did he do? These men were praying to an unknown false gods. False gods, because there is only one God. His name is Jehovah. His name is Yahweh. There's only one God. And so he knew who his God was and they were praying to who knows all the gods of this. They thought that they were ever raised up under and they were praying and they were praying. And when they identified that there was something about this Jonah and they threw him, listen, before they even threw him into the ocean, they were repenting to his God don't judge us by what we're about to do. Don't let his blood be upon us before we cast him into this raging sea, his death. Don't let his death be upon us. And the Bible says that, the, it, that it became calm. And look, God got the glory in all of this. Listen, God received the glory even in Jonah's disobedience. How? Because every one of the sailors vowed Read it in verse 16. They vowed to follow this God. Let me read it one more time if you forgot. One more time. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Listen, even in your disobedience, God can still get the glory through you. Listen, you may, have, you may have left your job and you know God didn't tell you to leave that job. But let's, guess what? You did it. God can bless you right where you're at. He's a God of second chances. He can bless you even in your storm right now. Listen, maybe, you, maybe you're a preacher, a pastor, evangelist, and you left something that you left out of, uh, of just basically, let's put it this way, you were disgruntled with some things, that things the, the ways that things were going. And you left on, let's say, bad terms or disobedience, if we have to truly admit it. Listen, God can still bless you in the midst of your storm because he wants the glory and he will get the glory. He will get it one way or the other. I, I, I'm, I'm so bodacious to think I'm so bodacious to believe that this God knew what Jonah was going to decide. He knew, well, obviously he knew because he had prepared a fish for him. 
So if he had prepared a fish, he knew was about to take place. I personally believe that. He knew that there was going to be a boat of people that was unbelievers that he was going to get on, that he was going to go to Tarshish, and every one of those unbelievers that was believing in a false god would turn their hearts to Yahweh. Oh, man, this is hitting my spirit in a certain way right now. Listen, God can use you even in the midst of chaos. God can use you even in the midst of your storm. God can bless you when it seems like this is the, I know I messed up, I made a mistake. God is the God of second chances. Listen, how do I know this? Look at his word. The Bible says that Peter denied Christ three times and Jesus even prophesied it to him. He says, you will deny me thrice before the cock crows before the you'll deny me three times before the cock crows three times i believe that's something i messed it up you'll deny me three times before the cock crows i think there you go he said he knew he would happen and look what we see peter peter the one who the bible says upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee this is the same guy that denied christ when he was watching christ being battered and destroyed and they begin to say, hey, isn't this the man that was with him? He said, no, it's not me. I'm not that guy. They went on and said, no, no, no. You sound just like this guy. You're one of his people. No, I'm not. As he began to get angry. Third time, he cursed. He cursed. He stepped out of character. And then the cock crowed at that moment. Now imagine with me. Was that the right thing for Peter to do? No, but he had to go through it. He had to address it. He had to deal with it. He had, Jesus knew that it was going to happen. I would want to believe that Jesus had so much faith in Peter that he would say, he won't deny me. He won't turn his back from me because I've already told him that, that, that there's an anointing on his life that... <clears throat> That man hath not revealed the things that he had just witnessed to me, for God Almighty had revealed that to him. Now, I can imagine that, that Jesus really wanted Peter to, to, not, to not waver or to not give up, but Jesus knew, even in the midst of his storm, that he would deny him. And where do we see Peter? He gets into guilt. He bitter, he has bitter, I guarantee he weeps bitterly because he remembered the very words that Christ spoken over him, that I would deny him. He knew, and he probably began to look at himself like a failure. I'm no good. I'm, I know all the other disciples are going to pray. I know they're hiding, but the, you know, I know where John's at. I know where, I know where they're at. I know where my brother, I know where he's going, but forget this, man. I'm going back to where I once was. I'm gonna go back to fishing. I'm gonna turn my back on all this stuff. And I'm gonna go back to being a fisherman, what I knew how to do. I'm gonna go back to my old ways. That's called disobedience, number one. I'm gonna go back and rebel against the things. I know Jesus Christ told me that upon this rock he would build the church, but I'm gonna go back to where I once was. And fast forward, here we see, and I'm feeling this. Here we see Peter on the boat. And where do we see him fishing? And then we see, we see this man that's on the shore. He says, hey, how about you? You know, he's basically asking him, are, are you fishing? You know, what are you doing? Are you catching anything? And then they realized and recognized it was Jesus that was there. What, what's the beauty about this? The Bible says, number one, that Peter was, he stripped himself naked and he, and he took off everything that he, he went back to where he once was. But what is so significant about this? That Peter, when he heard the voice of Jesus, the Bible says that he jumped out that boat. What is so significant about that? He left. Mm. He left the place that he felt comfortable, that he was familiar with. It was a place of disobedience. 
because God didn't tell him to go back and be a fisherman. He called him to be a fisher of men, and he knew it. And so he leaps out that boat. He jumps out that boat, swims to the shore, and the rest is history. What is so significant about this is that it's similar to Noah or, or to Jonah, that when he got out of the boat, God fulfilled what he wanted to do through Jonah. That fish was prepared. For three days he sat in there, and the Bible says, then finally on the third day, Jonah prayed, and that, that fish went to the shore of Nineveh and spewed him out. And there he went and proclaimed, repent. He proclaimed, uh, and they turned from their wicked ways, the Bible says. He fulfilled his purpose, but he was in a place of rebellion. He was in a place of disobedience. He was in a place that was considered to be the opposite direction. And what's beautiful and significant about Peter is that Peter went back very sim similar, similarly as Jonah did and went back to the boat that he was familiar with. And when he heard Jesus cry out to him, he jumped out of where he was, never to go back to that. And here's the beauty. How do I know Jesus can bless you even in the midst of your disobedience? Because he's a God of second chances. None of us are worthy of him. None of us are worthy of anything he has ever given us. But you know what he is worthy of? He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the honor, the glory that is due unto him. He's, he can even bless us in our storm. So I stand here today to tell you, I don't look at my circumstances and maybe, maybe I miss God or maybe I decided to do something that wasn't technically the place where God wanted me to go, but God still will bless you in your storm. Hey, let me pray for you right now. I'm, I just... I want to speak this over you right now and pray over you right now. You may feel like you're in a place of rebellion, disobedience. You've walked away from Christ. You've walked away from Him. You're calling. You've walked away maybe from your own family. You thought that was the right decision. Hey, it's time to reconcile. It's time to reconcile with the things that you may have allowed to be broken in your life. But mainly, more importantly, it's time to reconcile with our Savior and let Him restore you. Let Him restore you and make you brand new. So Father, in Jesus' name I pray, bring restoration, bring healing over these people that are watching and listening to this podcast. God, they may feel like they're in a place of disobedience. And, it's, and Father, it's okay. You've not given up on us. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. You, but we would leave you, and we can forsake you, but you, your word, will never return void, and you said you would never leave us, nor forsake you. So, Lord, we trust you, and we trust that you're going to lead us back to righteousness. We're praying that, God, you're going to lead us back so we may be able to follow your path, follow your word. And so, Father, even in the midst of, of our storm, let us declare together right now, we are blessed even in our storm. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, thank you once again for watching this week's podcast, Abridging the Gap. Hey, I'm your host, Pastor Nate Brozier. Until next time, God bless you. We'll see you then.